What's going on YouTube? Jeans here, back again, bringing you guys some more competitive ranked double battles for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. In today's video, we are going to be using Mammoth Swine alongside with some meta Pokemon on the rank ladder for Regulation E. You guys already know the deal. If you do enjoy the content anytime, make sure you support me as a content creator by leaving a like on today's video. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. But this team right here was created by Brawlick John. Brawlick John, huge shout out to you. If you guys want to go check out this team more in depth or want the Poke Pace for a squad, head down to Brawlick John's channel. Link is down in the description below. But Tornadus is going to be our first Pokemon for today's team preview. Rock and Prankster and Cobra Cloak, probably the best item and best ability for this Pokemon. It's got Tailwind, it's got Rain Dance for a little bit of weather control, and then you got Bleak Wind Storm and Taunt. In our second slot, we got the one and only Heat Train. Flash Fire and Leftovers, Heat Wave, Flash Cannon, Earth Power and Protect. With the Grass Terror type, a Pokemon you really can't go wrong with in Regulation E. Third slot is going to be Wellspring Ogre Pump with Water Absorb and then its normal moveset, which is super strong. Ivy Cudgel, Horn Leech, Follow Me, and Spiky Shield. Iron Hands is rocking in our fourth slot with Quirk Drive and the Assault Vest. Absolutely love this moveset, considering it has Heavy Slam on it to deal with Flutter Mains and Fairy type Pokemon. Its other three moves consist of Fake Out, Drain Punch, and Wild Charge. Fifth slot is going to be Mammoth Swine, an all time favorite of mine with Oblivious and the Focus Sash as its item. It's got Protect, it has EQ and High Horsepower for big time stab damage, and then it has a first turn priority move with Ice Shard. Final Pokemon is going to be Urshifu with Unseen Fist and the Choice Scarf as its item. It's got Surgeon Strikes and Aqua Jet with low sweep and close combat for a big time heavy stab damage in your Guys, you want to rent the team for yourself? Rent the code is that top right hand corner, but let's get after it. Let's hop on to that rank double ladder. Look to use Mambo Swine in Regulation E. First match is on its way, and we're going up against a really cool team Charizard, Torterra, Greninja, Umbreon. Lucario and Gengar. This team looks like a squad you would rock with for a playthrough. It looks so dope. I love it all around. But who am I leading and how am I getting after it? I definitely want to bring in Mammoth Swine somewhere in here. I feel as Mammoth Swine could be pretty good. I could actually go Tornadus and Mammoth Swine. I don't think that would be too bad because then I could freely EQ. I could set up Tailwind and I could really just get after the match that way. So you know what? I am going to end up doing that. In the back end, we got to bring in the Choice Scarf Urshfu. Such a strong Pokemon. It can hit really, really hard on a lot of these Pokemon. So I'm liking that a lot. And then last but not least, who is the call here? I could go Flash Fire with the Heatran. That's not too bad, right? And I might just do that. I kind of like that a lot. We got to watch out. Actually, I might just go Water Absorb. Yeah, I think that will work out a bit better. Water Absorb Ogre Pond. Because then we can deal with the Grand Ninja. I can be super effective onto the Grand Ninja. So I have water moves for the uh, for the Charizard. The only Pokemon we would have to watch out for is Torterra. But in this case, I mean, water moves are neutral up against it. Which is pretty solid considering it is ground and grass type. I can still hit it rather hard with the Ivy Cudgel. So, I like it all around. Plus, we have Mammoth Swine on the squad. If I can hit that thing with an Ice Move, Ice Shard, it's four times super effective. But Grand Ninja and Torterra are going to thrive out here. I see both you guys, and yeah, I think it's going to be pretty simple just to set up a nice lovely Tailwind, get the speed going, and maybe just, do I pop the EQ? Do I just hit with EQ? Or do I Terrasalize Ground? No, I don't think Ground Terror is, is the best for us. I think I might just try to land an Ice Shard on the Torterra. If he doesn't Terrasalize, that's four times super effective. It's going to be some nice damage. I like it all around. So he ends up not Terrasalize. He'd love that. We love that. So Mammoth Swine has the Sash. He's going to throw a nice big time Ice Shard over on this slot. And the damage. Four times super effective. Just dumping onto a Terra. Get it out my face. Get it out my face. Renish is going to pop an Ice Beam. And I feel so bad. Oh, I thought he missed it. But he's just switching to Protean. And KO in the Tornadus. With the end Grand Ninja hitting like an absolute truck. But hey, that's fine. Our Tornadus got off a lot of value. Putting up the Tailwind for the rest of the squad. And I could really get after it with, I would say, Urshfu, right? Do we just go Urshfu? Or do I go in with Ogre Pond? Ogre Pond's not bad. I think we go Ogre Pond because I can just Horn Leech, get some damage off onto the Grand Ninja. Actually, it's Ice type now. Oh, I totally forgot to switch typings. It's Ice type. But Umbreon's going to come out here. I don't mind having Ogre Pond here as well. And I think from here, I still just might pop an EQ. I might just pop an EQ. I could get a special defense boost. I think we're just going to Ivy Cudgel. And who do I get after you? I think I'm just going to go after... Actually, let's just go after Grand Ninja. I'm going to still EQ across the board. I think 
double hitting with the Q is going to be solid for us. So I'd be just going to fly here. I could have trash sliced ground for more damage, but we end up getting a crit and we just dump on it. All right, I'll take that all day. The reason I EQ'd is because I did not think Ivy Kudge was going to KO, but uh, the crit does. That works fine for me. So EQ is going to fly here. It does a little bit of damage over onto Ogre Pine. They're going to end up toxic me. All right. That's fine. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with the toxic. Mammoth Swine thriving out here in match number one. Umbreon's got the leftovers. And who are they going to bring out here? Potentially maybe Charizard. That's where things get a little scary, right? That's where things get a, a tad bit scary if Charizard comes out here. And it is Charizard. Yo, you got it. You got to knock that off. We don't like that one bit. So from here, I think I'm just going to IV Cudgel and then just uh, Terrasilize EQ. And the reason I want to do that is because if he doesn't Terrasilize the Charizard, we kill it with IV Cudgel. But if he does and it's not Flying type, which I would hope it's not, we still do some big time damage for EQ. So... I like, I like it here. I don't mind doing damage to my Ogre Pond. I have Choice Scarf or Shrew in the back end. It's going to work really, really well. So, I'm cool with this. I'm cool with this. So, put on the ground tower for us. We love it a lot. Plus, it takes the Ice Typing off of my, uh, off of my Mammoth Spine. So, if he wants to go into a Heat Wave with Charizard, we can still thrive. And there's a Terror type. So, Terror's coming out here. Go ahead. Go into anything but flying. Anything but flying would be awesome. Electric. Oh, my God. That's even better. That is just perfect for us. That is just more than perfect. More than perfect. Ivy Cudgel is still going to do a huge chunk of damage onto it. But EQ now can just finish that thing. Perfect, yo. So my plan worked out pretty nicely here. EQ is able to lane. There's a KO the Umbreon. No, Umbreon's soaking rather well. So it's Ogre Pond to this. Nice. Get rid of the Charizard. Now he doesn't really have any offensive threat. And they just turn off their console. So there is match number one. Go to your boy jeans. We start off 1-0. Second match is here. Would love to go back to back for you guys and get things started off 2 0. We're going up against a Screens Grim Snarl team, which is always a problem. Screens are just a such a pain to actually deal with. So maybe I'll lead a fake out user just to fake it out and kind of get after it. They also have Ogre Pond. They've Intimidate with Landers. Then they got Crest, Iron Hands, and Full Corona. Like I said, I kind of want to just stop Screens right here. So I think I'm just going to go Heatran alongside with Iron Hands. I can fake out. I can have Flash Cannon. I believe we have Flash Cannon, right? Yeah, and we can probably take out the the Grimstone from there, which would be nice, which would definitely be nice. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring Mammoth Swine in the back end because having first turn priority Ice Boot is going to be pretty solid for us. And then last but not least, do we just Choice Scarf Urshifu here and just say screw the Tailwind? Yeah, I like it. I just think the only thing we have to watch out for is going to be the Ogre Pond with Water Absorb. I could actually go Ogre Pond on my own, which would be pretty solid. But I just like having that Choice Scarf Urshifu in the back end just to outspeed and hit really, really hard. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Just got to keep it in the back of my head to maybe not choice into a water move if we don't know Ogre Pond is in the back end, right? Because we don't want to choice to that water move and then them go into Ogre Pond and just screw us over for the rest of the match. It could definitely be bad for us. Or if we can't swap out at that point. Because that would just be a free win. We just constantly heal up HP for it. And it just gets real ugly. Right, it gets real ugly. But first match went to us. We made some good plays with Mammoth Swan. Got to showcase it really well. But they end up going Grim Snarl and Ogre Pond. So Follow Me could come out here. Do we think it's going to come out here, though? I think potentially he just spiky shields for us, right? So, you know what? I'm just going to do this. And I'm just going to go for a Flash Cannon. I don't think you go for a Follow Me here. I think it's more of a spiky shield kind of play, right? Makes the most sense to just go for a spiky shield. I should have probably Terrasilized, but I do not think Ogre Pond's attacking me here. Right? I think it's more so Spike Shield. So if I could just fake out the Grimstone, I'll get off a Flash Cannon. And then maybe Thrasilize Heatran next turn. It'd be good. And there it is. Cool. Spike Shield out and about. We love this turn so much. And I get off this big time fake out onto the Grimstone. And maybe, just maybe Flash Cannon KOs. Because if it does KO, we're sitting real pretty. We're sitting real pretty. It does. That is massive. That is massive, yo. Let's go. Big time plays from Gene's turn one there. And now from here, we're going to Thrasilize Heatran. We're not dealing with the water moves coming into it. We have Flash Fire. I think it's just such a perfect combo, the entire type of Flash Fire. But that was such a huge turn. We read the Protect. We knew Ogre Pond wasn't attacking us, and Lando comes out here. So Intimidate's going to do a little bit to us, but I don't think I'm that worried about that. I do not think I'm that worried about it. So, now I'm just going to go into... I think uh, I could Terrasilize in the Fire, but... 
I could swap and maybe Urshifu here. Do I swap an Urshifu? Could. I could. I definitely could. Um. Hmm. I might just use my Focus Ash here and save Fake Out for later. Cause if he's going for EQ and all that, you know what? We're just going to go into you. I like, I, I like Urshfu. I like hard swapping into Urshfu and then terrestrializing you. And just popping a heat wave across this board. So I get the Intimidate minus one off me. I reset my fake out. I think Urshfu should be able to soak up a shot. I highly doubt he's going for a Horn Leech with Urkapon into the Iron Hand slot, right? It just doesn't really make a lot of sense. Now it's the perfect time to terrestrialize Heat Train. Maybe we can land a nice big time heat wave. Maybe get off a burn on the lander. So that'd be massive. But we'll see. We'll see. What we're doing. Could terrestrialize Lando, maybe. That is a choice. But uh, no, they end up going stop the tangent, and we perfectly terrestrialize. Big time plays for us. And he ends up going for Ivy Cudgel to double down. So just a money Terra, a money swap for us. And hopefully we get off a big time heat wave here. Can we land it? Oh, you're missing. Who are you missing? Okay, you missed the Overpine. That's fine. We get off some nice damage on the Lando. And no burn for us. So no burn comes out here. I cannot go for my moves. I mean, he has water absorbed. So I'm just going to choice into a nice, lovely close combat and punch the Ogre Pond. And then I'm just going to stick with Heat Wave and throw it across the board. But yeah, Urshfu's here. We have Fake Out in the back end. We still have another great Pokemon with Magma Swine late game. I like what we're sitting. I, I like it. I like where we're sitting. Just such a big first turn for us, allowing him not to get off screens and reading the protect. But he ends up just swapping Lando. That's cool with me. That's cool with me. Who are you going to go into here? Your final Pokemon is going to be Iron Hands. So maybe we get off a burn onto it. That'd be pretty big. He ends up going for a follow me, and he just wants to soak up damage for this turn. Okay. That's fine. Me, close combat's going to come across. Bop, big time damage. Can Heat Wave finish him off? My defense is low. This might be a good turn to swap back in uh, Iron Hands. Yep, big time KO. So you pick up a nice KO here. And do we get a burn by chance? No, no burn. And he's just going to intimidate my Urshfu again. So at this point, yeah, we're going to swap Urshfu back into Iron Hands. Because we know Lander's coming out here. And I can reset my choice Scarf. I can reset my defense stats. I can reset my attack stat drops. And get my fake out on. And then I can have Urshfu in the back end with Surgeon Strikes. Love it. I love it. I love what we're saying. But yeah, hard swap in the Iron Hands. And do I just protect you? Yeah, I'm just going to protect each turn. Because a fake out could come into this slot too. A fake out could definitely come into this slot, but I think they're gonna fake out the uh, the iron hands. But I have such a lead right now, I don't want to overthink. I don't want to overcommit or make like a, a risky play. So I just think protecting is just gonna be the smart play here. So wow, they end up quitting after that swap. We love it. We love it. I guess they were going into a flying terror into a terror blast, but. That's gonna be it. I think we can actually see, right? That is so funny. Yeah. Two opponents quitting today? No way. No way. That's awesome. So yeah, so they're going into a flying terror shot. We end up just reading that really hard and uh, making them quit. Final match on its way in this video is already a victory. 2-0, making two opponents turn off their console. I love it. I love doing it. But we're going up against a Trick Room team with a Rangaroo, Torkoal, Dustclops, and they're also rocking out with Regilecki and Didi and Ursaluna Blood Moon form. So again, little problem. They got Trick Room. Trick Room is a huge problem. We do have Taunt on Tornadoes, which might want to be our lead, right? We could always taunt the Trick Room user. But if they go in DD, then we're sitting here like, hey, yo, that's a problem. <laughs> it could be a problem. It definitely could be a problem. Because I think they're going to lead it because I really don't want to waste a turn with Tornadus, right? I really don't want to waste it. But I'm going to go Iron Hands here. We can fake out. If they end up going into the terrain, we'll still be thriving with our uh, slowness. So I like that. I could also go in with you. But potentially lead you. 132. You're actually really fast, Mammoth Swine. Mammoth Swine is a fast little customer for its... Uh, for its size, but I, I like it here. I'm gonna go Mammo Swine here for lead. I'm gonna bring Heatran in the back end, just kind of deal with the Torkoals. And last but not least, we'll go Wellspring Ogre Pond. We'll look for that perfect record. But yo, 2 0 cannot be complained, especially making two people turn off their consoles. I was actually confused to why they turned off their console in the second match, but then I realized I was like, oh, they're terrestrializing the flying. They want to go for a Terra Blast in the Earth food, but then they seen we swapped into Iron Hands and kind of just, just soiled their plan, right? Really just did them dirty. But they end up going Dust Cops and Regilecki. Uh, Regilecki 
could just protect. It could definitely protect. I might just go into a... Hmm. I might just double down into... I might just double down into Dusclops here. Do we Terrasize to try to KO it? I think we might. I think that might be the play for us. Yeah, I'm going to Terrasize to try to KO it. I think Reggie just protects our hard swaps here, right? There's no way it stays in here with a ghost type next to him. He's probably sitting here thinking, hey, like, I'm going to get faked out, so I might as well protect, right? It makes the most sense. So I'm just not even going to worry about Reglucky here. And I'm going to just hit that tire button. I'm going to be so surprised if you stay in here, Reggie, but I don't really see you doing too much damage on us, regardless. I, I really do think you're protecting or maybe just full switching this turn. Never mind. You're exploding. You are exploding. That is hilarious. That is so funny. But yeah, wow, Dust Cops is way too bulky. This should not be a thing. I was thinking maybe I could do enough damage to maybe KO it, but I don't even come close. I don't even come close. That's so ugly. <laughs> I don't even come close to that, but yo, Explosion Reg like he's so funny. Was not expecting that. It's because I played uh, Sword and Shield for so long that seeing like Explosion come out here from Reg Lecky is just weird, right? But from here, I'm just going to double down into Ursuline here. Go for a nice little Ice Shard. Go for a nice little Drain Punch. He's going to end up harassing Ursuline. And maybe just going with the normal Terra. Which could be scary. Hopefully, Iron Hands is slower. And maybe can just put the punchies on him. Get a lot of HP back. Because if not, I'm just going to get Nightshaded alongside with a... Uh, alongside with a Hyper Voice, which could be scary. Brick Break's going to come through here. And he's going to always oh, proc a Weakness Policy. This is getting real scary. This Dust Cops is a problem. This Cops is so good. Can you outspeed Iron Hands? Do yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor. Just outspeed him and, and KO this thing. Nah, you're dead. That's game. That's pretty much game. We're, we're, not, we're not surviving these shots. So we're going to have a pretty quick video for today. We kill in the first two matches. We get absolutely dumped on in the final match. It happens. But Dust Cops is, is a big time threat. Is there any way I could potentially win this game? Let's see. I mean, I have Heatran. I got Ogre Pond as well. I mean, um, Spiky Shield turn one potentially, right? But Terrasalize is a real question. So I don't want him going for a ground move. That's looking scary as well. I might just Terrasalize. I mean, I could just follow me. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to follow me. I'm going to go for the Heat Wave. I can't Terrasalize. I already used him. What am I, what am I thinking? So I'm just going to go for a follow me just in case the ground move wants to come out here. Yeah, this one's this one's wraps. This one's so wraps. Dusclops is so bold. I hit it with a high horsepower Terra and stab. Alongside with a wild charge, and it barely did half. Like, how are you that bulky? And you're not even a final evolution. But they end up hard swapping Dusclops, and this might give us somewhat of a chance here. Let's see what they go into. Maybe be Indeedy. We might just end up protecting Ursula here, which I wouldn't mind. I mean, if I can start wasting on tricking turns, that'd be huge. But we end up going for the follow me. He ends up going for the earth power. It's a good call for us to to follow me. We're able to soak. Heat wave's going to come in here. And it's missing. Who's it missing? It's missing both of them. Why? Like, there's no need. Why are you missing both of them? Why are you missing both of them? just hurts the soul but i'm just gonna go for a horn leech i'm gonna try to get back hp he waves a 90 percent accuracy move and for it to miss on both pokemon oh my god the odds are slim to none but we're gonna try to protect here we're gonna hope that the earth power is coming after me and no you're just going for the hyper yep see you ogre pond see you later ogre pond you're dead please go for higher horse power nope hyper voice later ggs somehow soaked us up ogre pond there's no shot you're dead all right, that's going to be game for us. We're, we're going to run this one, and we're going to keep our heat train alive. But I wish that heat wave would have landed. Because if it would have landed, it would have did some big-time damage. And maybe I wouldn't have protected that turn. I could have probably just attacked the next turn. And then just protect this turn and waste out trick room. And we would have had a decent shot, but no. 
it's over here. Unless I go double protect. No, it's over. You got you got the ground boost, and we're not KOing that receiver in one shot. So I'm just gonna run this battle. <laughs> GG's to our opponent. Quick video. We go two and one and dominate with today's team. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Two and one winning record. Rocking out with Mammoth Swine in regulation. E. Absolutely love this Pokemon. Hits hard with the EQ. Hits hard with the high horsepower. And then having that Ice Shard first turn priority really comes in clutch, especially up against Pokemon like Landorus or other Pokemon such as Torterra, like we versed today, for a little bit of four times super effective damage. But guys, that is going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy the content, don't forget to smash that like button for me. And if you're new here, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. Seriously, you guys rock out. Make sure you spread spots today, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.